This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. All right, guys, so we are currently in the parking lot of a thrift store because I'm filming a thrift episode, but they are not open yet. So I thought really quick, let's film an episode. So today I wanted to talk about some street photography tips that you can utilize when you are shooting film to get the best possible results. Now, if you're like me and you do both street photography and you shoot it on film, there are a lot of things that you need to do a little bit differently than digital to achieve really good results. And honestly, there are a ton of more creative effects that you can get while you're out there shooting film. If you want that classic street photography film look, this episode is for you because I'm gonna be sharing all of my secrets and talk about how I get the best results while I'm out there shooting. And be sure to stick till the very end because I think the last tip is probably one of the most important when it comes to black and white street photography on film. So without further ado, you guys, let's jump into my 35 millimeter film street photography tips. Okay, so it doesn't really matter what film camera you have, but whatever one you have, grab it right now because there are some things that I'm going to reference and you're gonna need your camera to see uh, what I'm talking about. Now, these tips, I guess you can utilize them for digital, but they're more crafted for film shooters, especially because uh, film being so unique, there are so many small details that usually go unnoticed while you're shooting digital that you really need to pay attention to because they make drastic changes while you're out there shooting film. And the first one, folks, is your shutter speed. Now, when you do shoot film, your shutter speed plays a lot of different roles. The first one it plays is an exposure. If you're shooting sunny 16 and you're using 400 ISO film, you know, your shutter speed is going to be set to 1 500th of a second. Now here's where you kind of need to balance things out. 1 500th of a second is a good shutter speed, I would say overall. But if you want to freeze any action, the lowest shutter speed that you can use is 1 250th of a second. So while you're out there shooting street photography and you know that you're going to photograph someone, let's just say walking, and you want them frozen in time, your shutter speed needs to be 1 250th of a second at all times to make sure they freeze in motion. On the flip side, let's say you want to incorporate some type of movement. Maybe it is a biker going through a really pretty composition and you want to have a little bit of motion blur to kind of show the direction in which the biker is traveling. Well, folks, in that sense, the shutter speed that I would use is 1 1 25th of a second. This is very specific to film photography because as your shutter speed changes, you need to change your aperture so that you can properly expose the film because your film's ISO never changes changes. So always remember different shutter speeds create different effects. And as a result of getting these different effects, you need to adjust your exposure accordingly. So with that said, after you change your shutter speed, let's say to 1 1 25th of a second to give a little bit of motion blur, the next thing you got to worry about is your aperture. Now personally for me, the sweet spot when it comes to street photography is between f 5.6 and f 8. And the reason why this is the sweet spot is because if you're shooting at f16, first things first, that is a very, very deep depth of field, which means everything across your frame is going to be in focus, whether it is five inches away from you or infinity. And then let's just say you kind of open up to like f4, f2.8, that's a very shallow depth of field. So, you know, something four inches in front of you is going to be out of focus if you are focused all the way to infinity. Vice versa, if you're focused four inches away, everything behind it is going to be out of focus. So in order to maximize the focus, focus range, my personal set apertures are 5.6 and f8. And this is going to give me a good balance between depth of field, be able to create some background separation at like f5.6, or to have enough in focus to tell a story. If you're shooting things that are like around 10 feet or more away from you, I would personally shoot at like f8. And if you're shooting subjects between the two feet and let's just say seven feet range, I would say 5.6 is a very, very good aperture. Now aperture and shutter speed obviously are the two main variables when it comes to exposing your film and so when it comes to exposing that film correctly whether you are shooting with a light meter or just shooting manual with sunny 16 you want to be able to feed your color film at least as much light as possible now if your meter is reading let's just say 5.6 at 1 250th of a second most of the time your light meter is going to give you like an overall it's going to give you an average reading but that doesn't always account for the shadows especially if it's something backlit so oftentimes my next tip is going to be to overexpose your film by one stop from what your meter tells you. So if you're at 5.6, 1 250th of a second, I would probably shoot that at 5.6, 1 1 25th. Or if you want to change up the aperture, you can go F4 at 1 250th of a second. This way you kind of give yourself a little bit of, you know, some insurance there. You're not going to underexpose those shadows. And even 
even if your meter is correct in that reading, it's always a safe bet to feed your film more light. Because with film photography, you can really save those highlights, whereas if you were trying to save the shadows, it's gonna be a lot more tough. Usually underexposed areas in the shadows tend to become really muddy, they become really grainy and not really saveable despite all the magic that you can do in Lightroom. And so I would prefer just to retain a ton of information and detail in the highlights, pull that back later in post if needed. Now folks, the next three tips are probably the most important and they're honestly what I am making this video about. Uh, but before we get into that, I wanna give a huge thank you and shout out to our sponsor for this episode, the good folks over at Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Now, as a photographer in 2023, one of the best ways to get your name out there is to create your own professionalized website. Squarespace makes it simple by offering a ton of different award-winning templates that you can use to get started within minutes. You can create a portfolio, an e-commerce shop, and probably one of my newest favorite features, the videos page, where you can display video content directly from a URL or direct upload. Personalizing your website and content has never been easier with Squarespace. And so if you guys want to get started today with your own professional website, head over to squarespace.com slash kingjames and enter promo code kingjames at checkout. And you guys are going to get 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or a website. Huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. All right, you guys, tip number four. When you are shooting film, you don't get to really see the results right away. And obviously that is gonna play a huge role in the way you approach your photography. So with that said, the next tip is to pre-focus and wait. This is a little tip that I found really useful just so I am not wasting my film. Often I'll find a composition that I like. I'll sit there and then I'll focus at something around the vicinity, whether that be like the light pole, a street pole, maybe even like a mark on the street. And after I pre-focus, I'll sit there and wait for a second. And when somebody walks near here or around that area in which I already pre-focused, I'll take the photograph. That way we're not just shooting a ton of film and kind of wasting our shots, seeing if we're gonna get it in focus or not. There's really no way to tell until you get the film developed. And so pre-focusing and waiting will save you a ton of film and a ton of shots. And you're gonna get a lot more bangers using this method than just, you know, spraying your camera. Now tip number five, folks, carry fi oh, that's not good. <laughs> I usually have more film in here. I guess I only have one roll right now. But tip number five is to carry at least three rolls of film at a time. Three rolls is probably the best medium between carrying enough rolls and just not having any. I found myself shooting in the city so many times where I'll think maybe I'm gonna have a slow day, I'll take one roll of film and then it just picks up and then I don't have a second roll. And running out of film sucks, you guys. That way you have some extra rolls while you're out shooting and you don't have to worry one bit. And my last tip, you guys, has to do with black and white film. Now, black and white film for street photography is just a staple. All of my favorite street photographers from the past have mostly shot black black and white. Now, weirdly enough, when you shoot black and white film and you go down this rabbit hole, you're gonna discover different you know, film stocks, different ways to shoot them like HP5, Tri-X 400, and the, the list goes on and on and on. But there are a couple of little things that I wish I knew when I first started shooting black and white film that really makes a huge difference in the way it looks at the end of the day. The first one is choosing the right film stock for the type of black and white street photography you're gonna be doing. So uh, depending on the type of look you want, I feel like low contrast black and white films look really good for that. You know, you're not looking for like the punchy black and white tones. You're looking at photographing people, faces, stories, different events. And a great film for that is something like T-Max. T-Max 100 or T-Max 400. Those are low contrast, low grain films. And these are really soft and it makes honestly black and white street photography really flattering. That looks really, really great for that style of street photography. Now, on the other hand, if you are looking to get that punchy black and white look, you know, shoot for things like HP5 or Tri-X. One of my favorite film stocks, folks, is actually Ilford Delta 3200. Super high grain because it is an 800 ISO film pushed to 3200, and uh, it gives you that really nice punchy black and white look. So kind of match the hatch when it comes to the style of black and white street photography you're looking to shoot. The second tip that I have within this is to push your film stocks. Now, there are a couple of different ways you can do this. Uh, before we even get into that, pushing your film essentially just means you're gonna be underexposing it by you know however many stops you wanna push it. So let's 
say for example at 400 ISO, I want to push it two stops. I'm going to go from 400 to 800 to 1600. Now, because that is a two stop underexposure, you need to tell the lab, hey, I'm pushing my film by two stops. That way they can leave it in the developer a little bit longer to achieve that result. So make sure if you are pushing your film, you tell the lab. But with that said, what does pushing film do for the look of it? Well, first it gives it a little bit more grain. Also, you get a lot of really nice high contrast shooting high contrast black and white in that punchy look this is great for things like you know shadow play achieving like a slide film type of look by exposing only for the highlights and the shadows get really dark and you know super deep these are really really fun ways to make your black and white street photography pop it's a great option for anybody out there who shoots like hp5 or triex if you want to kind of have that punchy black and white look you might want to put a priority on exposing for the highlights but if you want like a more flat type of look with black and white film you're going to want to expose for the shadows and it's a little bit different when it comes to black and white film because with color film those highlights can be retained but with black and white film once you expose those highlights sometimes because it is just light it gets completely blown out so it's up to you on what look you want to have and achieve but you can really change the look of what black and white film looks like based on prioritizing whether if you want your highlights to be exposed properly or if you want your shadows to be exposed properly and the last black and white film tip that I have for you folks is you need to buy your black and white film in bulk now I'm not talking buying HP 5 in like the 10 roll brick that's fine Honestly, you're probably gonna get a better deal than just buying it individually every single time But what I'm talking about is buying it in bulk rolls now a lot of these companies like Ilford and Kodak They offer Tri-X and HP 5 in bulk 100 foot rolls and you can roll it up yourself and just save a ton of money It comes out to around five or six dollars a roll and honestly It's the way to go if you shoot a ton of black and white film look at your options If there are black and white films that you like out there see if they offer it in a bulk roll You're gonna save a ton of money, but folks that is going to wrap it up for my film photography street photography tips i hope you enjoyed it let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have any questions comments or concerns or if you even have anything else to add we'd love to hear what you guys have to say but that's gonna wrap it up for me you guys i'll see you all in the next episode as always minolta game